Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. We're here on the shores of Eagle Mountain Lake, and um, we didn't go to our prayer cabin this year. But we had, we we planned to, but we had another situation that came up, so we did it here uh, this this time instead. And right now, there's just a light breeze blowing across the lake, and it's just delightful, beautiful. And people say, you mean there's a mountain out there? Yes, there is. That's where it got its name. <laughs> now, particularly back before they, they dammed up this lake, the, the Trinity, I believe it's Trinity River, came down through here and up back towards the dam. And still, many times, we get in our boat here and, um, and go all the way around and as we turn the corner down there and where you can, see, you can see it, you can see it sticking up right there. And there's a mountain sticking up there. And there's a, an alkali spot on the side of that mountain. And it looks just like a, the wings of an eagle and he has his head turned like this. It's Eagle Mountain Lake. It's Eagle Mountain International Church. Thought you needed to know that. Inquiring minds need to know. <laughs> So, and it's a little breezy today and it's cool and it's nice. We need to save it all up because summer in Texas is coming. <laughs> Amen. That's good too. Father, we thank you again today for the, the power of your written word and the power of your name because your name is good and your name is behind all of this. And we pray in your name. And in your name, these signs, these signatures will follow. And we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's Jesus' signature. He commanded it and we do it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, here in the book of James once more, now you have to remember, James is, a, is Jesus' half-brother. <laughs> How would you like to have had Jesus as your older brother? He never did anything wrong. <laughs> and why can't you be like Jesus? <laughs> anyway, but glory to God. So let's take a look at this. And um, there's... there's James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greedy. My brethren, count it all joy. Ha, ha, ha. When you fall into temptations, tests, and trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Healing. Finances, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally that upbraideth. And it can be given, but let him ask in faith. Let, let him get in the word and stay there till, the, till he has title deed to it. <laughs> Go, yes. Nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. What is a double-minded man? Well, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He went to sleep, planning on them taking the other side. Well, there was a thunderstorm came up out there on the Galilee. They woke him up and said, Master, they called him master. Don't you care that we're about to die? That's a double-minded man and that's unstable. What should have been said? When what did he say? Oh, you of little faith. <laughs> In some places he said, you of no faith, <laughs> complete unbelief. Everybody's believing something all the time. You can't turn your believer off unless you're asleep. No, you believe something. It's like, well, I think I'll fast a few days. No, mm -mm. 
you're about to eat three or four of the biggest meals you've ever eaten in your life. But when you get on the word and you say, I am going to fast for three full days with nothing but water and the word. I have a situation that I'm putting before the Lord and I believe I receive the answer to it according to this and I receive it. You don't even get hungry. I know. I've done it time and time and time and time again. So now, and now here's something I want you to see. I want you to come over here. Uh, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity or abundance of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word. <laughs> Humble yourself. That's what he said over here. What's what Peter said? Humble yourself. Humble yourself about it. And listen now. And be ye what? Doers. Act on it. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. If a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man beholding himself in a natural face in the glass. He beholds himself and goes his way straightway, forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Oh, dear Lord, I love it. The perfect law of liberty. Jesus said it like this. Continue ye in my word, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, it'll set you free. Well, there are newspapers that have used that verse and said the truth will set you free. No, but what their, their newspaper, you don't know whether it's truth or not. This is truth. This is authority. God said, I have made you the father of many nations. Now, if you'll do what I say, you will be. But I'm going to change your name so everybody knows. <laughs> That's truth. And, it, and it's amazing to me how many people have never studied and found out, particularly the uh, United States citizens, have never studied about George Washington, the first president of this nation, about his inauguration. He went to the 17th chapter of Genesis in his own Bible and prayed and entered covenant with the almighty God of Israel. However, let's go back here. Be a doer of the word. Act on it. Now, this is the uh, Weymouth New Testament it went out of print, so um, our ministry, Kenneth Copeland Publications, now have all the rights to this, So, and you can order it, and it's in, it comes in different sizes, this, this uh, a taller one and skinnier one, and uh, David Weeder, bless his heart, took this one and had it rebound in leather, and so this is the one I enjoy using. I want you to listen to this. Let's read right here um, in the second chapter. Um, first of all, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of uh, daily food, one who says to him, depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, withstanding you give them those things. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Now, 
Oh, I like this. In the second chapter, in uh, Francis Weymouth, a Bible scholar, uh, read his history. It's wonderful. But especially his New Testament. Now, right here, that was in the second chapter. Let's start there in the second chapter and um, the 14th verse. In chapter 2, verse 14, what good is it, my brethren, if a man professes to have faith and yet his actions do not correspond? The King James says works. And people say, well, I didn't think we're supposed to do it by works. We're supposed to do it by faith. This straightens it out. What good is it, my brethren, if a man possesses to have faith and yet his actions do not correspond? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother and sister poorly clad or like da daily food and one says, fare you well, keep yourselves warm and well fed. D do not supply bodily needs. What use is that? So also faith if it is unaccompanied, unaccompanied by obedience, is dead in itself. Nay, some will say, you have faith, I have actions. Prove to me your faith apart from corresponding actions, and I will prove mine to you by my actions. You believe that God is one, and you quite well, and so forth. Now, corresponding actions, say that. My faith must have corresponding action or it's dead. If I don't act on the word and what I believe, there is no expression of my faith, nor is there any release of it. Now take that to heart. That's powerful, but you're believing. Well, let me just give you an example. I went to preach for Hilton Sutton's dad, Dad Sutton, in Beaumont, Texas. And a flu, flu broke out all over the country. There were football teams that didn't have enough players. And, and um, so when I got there, he said, Brother Copeland, I couldn't, I couldn't guarantee you $50 if you stayed a month. I said, well, did I ask him? No, but he said, we've got the flu. People in my church have the flu. And, oh, I said, well, you know what to do. Let's get your oil bottle and we'll just, we'll just get over there on James 5 and, uh, and we'll, we'll go to work. And there were a number of them. And uh, I would read the healing scriptures to them and, and say, uh, now what are you going to do? You going to just lay there and be sick or are you going to put corresponding action to your faith? Uh, it just take the cover of that, and I've done it myself, and just put it back. And oh, Brother Copeland, yes, I'm healed in the name of Jesus, and start walking around the room, and all the symptoms leave. All oh, but one. How can I say this sweetly? Not head. <laughs> No, he just, he, he wasn't any sicker than anyone else. He didn't have any more symptoms than anyone else. He said, no, sir. I'm not going to do it. I said, why? This is what the words are. I know the Bible says that, looking at me because he's older than me, you know, like what you young I know the Bible says that, but I'm not going to say something I can't feel or see. I'm sick. Well, he was. When he said, I'm sick, he became very sick. He almost died. No corresponding action. All of them but one. I was preaching in Oklahoma City and um, Brother Hartsfield's church. And uh, I woke up one morning. We were staying in the home of Lavinia James. Now, Lavinia James, bless her heart, 
uh, she went to um, uh, Oral Roberts' tent meeting and got healed of cancer. And after that, I mean, she took people to the meeting. She took people everywhere to the meetings. And she lived there in Oklahoma City, so we were staying with her. I woke up one morning. I went to bed uh, feeling good. I didn't feel great. I woke up the next morning. Oh, I had the flu. Oh. I said, Gloria, you're going to have to help dress me. You mean you're going to go over there and preach? No, I'm healed. How can you say that? By faith. I read the book. <laughs> By his stripes you were healed. If you were healed, I am now. I've been redeemed from the curse of the flu. You can find it right there in, in Deuteronomy 28. Under the curse, you'll be smitten with pestilence until you've consumed thee off of the land and smite thee with consumption, with fever, inflammation, extreme burning, with blasting and mildew and pursue you until you perish. But I've been redeemed from that, bless God, forevermore. So I said, you're going to have to shave me. And uh, I was, I don't know, I went, no, no, now wait a minute. I don't think, I, I'm not going to trust you with a blade. I said, uh, Lavinia, do you happen to have an electric shaver? Oh, yeah, she said, I do. It's okay, use that. She had to hold my head up and shave my face. There's no way I'm going to stay in the bed. Nope. So I sat there in the car all, all the way to the church. <laughs> so got to the church. I can just see it in my mind. And uh, Gloria and I came in through a side door over there and I went on up on the platform. She and Lavinia sat down front. And morning service, but it was, it was pretty well packed out. And I went up to the pulpit and the room went <laughs> So, uh, okay. I said, I'll be back in just a moment. Well, the choir practice room was right behind the platform. I just went out the side of the platform there and back in that choir room. I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve, you take your hands off my body. I rebuke you. I resist you in the name of Jesus. I mean it right now. I prayed in the spirit back there. I don't know how long. That's much better. So I walked out there and put my Bible and everything up on, in my notebook on, on the podium. And the room went. <laughs> so I said, okay, turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter 2, 24. <laughs> and we started there. I preached healing for two hours and 15 minutes. Walked out of there completely well and healed. Corresponding action. Now, how much time do I have, Tim? Five. We can do this. Okay. Uh, let's go back over here to the, to the book of Mark. Chapter five. And um, they came over of uh, verse 40, he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? That's when he rebuked the see, You have no faith. They feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? I put right down, he's a faith man. They came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. Well, Gadara is a, over a, is a one part around the... the uh, Sea of Galilee, that big lake there. It is, it, is, it is big. You can see why they called it a sea. There came out of him a tombs a man with an unclean spirit. 
who had his dwelling among the tombs so no man could bind him, knowing not with chains, because he had been often bound with often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the shackles broke into pieces, neither could any man tame him. Always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, cutting himself with stones. When Jesus saw, and when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice, said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, you torment me not. That's that devil talking. For he said unto him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is your name? He answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many, three to 6,000 devils. So you have one, you go over the sixth chapter of Ephesians and the Holy Spirit will show you through the apostle Paul, uh, the devil's operation from the ground up, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. This was a ruler of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in the heavenly places. This was a, this was a ruler of the darkness of this world and he had rule over three to 6,000 other devils that were coming and going through him and they were, all of them were controlling that whole area around there. Now there was now under the mountains a great... Uh, herd of swine feeding, all the devils besought him, saying, send us out of the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered under the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and drowned in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and it went out to see him that what was done, and they came to Jesus and see, see him that was possessed with the devil, had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now listen to what he said. Uh, and uh, when he was come to the ship, he had possessed with him, and prayed him that he might be with him. Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to your friends. If you look that up in the BLD, the Blue, Blue Letter Bible, if you don't have it, get it. It is supported uh, by donations. You need to get it and support it. You can look all these words up and tell what, what they mean in Greek or in Hebrew. In friends, all of yours, friends, family, Tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Clothed and in his right mind. Tim, where did he get the clothes? You think Jesus said, uh, boys, take off your clothes and put... No, that's not going to work. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's corresponding action before you do what the Lord has led you to do. There was a time that, well, in fact, it was in that meeting in Boma. I heard it in my spirit. This is going to be the best meeting financially you've ever, you've ever had. So Gloria and I got together and we said, we need this and we need this. So we're going to tithe ahead of time. So obviously Jesus had commanded Judas, who was the treasurer. Now listen, there's a man over there on the other side of the Galilee. I'm going to deliver him. I'm going to call him to preach and send him home. He needs some clothes. He's over there naked. I'm going to send him home embarrassed. And they provided the clothes before they went. Corresponding action before you do it. This is the way it works. I'll be back in just a moment. Life situations can feel hopeless, but you as a believer in Christ Jesus have a life force that lives inside you. In the Miraculous Love Package, including the book by Kenneth Copeland, Walking in the Realm of the Miraculous, 
he describes how you can be surrounded by God's love and walk in the miraculous in your everyday life. Partnered with the Force of Forgiveness teaching on CD or digital download, Brother Copeland explains how forgiveness is the life force for you and your family. See how forgiveness is a force that relates exactly to healing, and to forgive others is an act of faith. There are things available to us in walking in the love of God that are not available in any other way. Learn how to apply this in your family life, on the job, and in everyday life. God's love in you changes situations. Request your free copy of the Miraculous Love Package. Walk in God's love and forgiveness and make living in the supernatural and the miraculous part of your everyday life. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. If you live your life by faith, you never have to change your lifestyle because of the times. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that's the way we must be. Whose report will we believe? We believe the book. We prosper with anybody else does or not because we know the laws of prosperity. Join us for the New Year's Eve service with Kenneth Copeland at Eagle Mountain International Church on Sunday, December 31st at 7 p.m. Central. To learn more, go to kcm.org today. Thank you for joining us today. I, and I strongly suggest that you get a copy of, of uh, Weymouth New Testament and get on kcm.org and you can find out how to receive it out of the bookstore. And are you receiving the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine? It's every month free publication. We, in fact, we send this out to partners and friends all over the world. Each edition, the Word of God, encourage your spirit builds your faith, stories of, of miracles, articles from uh, me and from Gloria and others. Now go to kcm.org for, for the information on that. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland reminding you again that God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. So give him a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.